Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Versus. This time around, I'm going to be comparing the C2 with the M2, both of which are Hercules Starlifter variants. The whole point of the Versus series is to pit two ships up against one another that perform the same task, but go about doing it in different ways. And when it comes down to it, these two variants are the most closely matched out of any other ship that you could possibly try and compare them to. This video is also meant to be used as a guide for anyone who's interested in getting a Hercules Starlifter, but can't decide between the M2 and the C2 and wants to know more about how they stack up against one another. Another reason why I chose these two ships is because neither one of them is a direct upgrade from the other, but instead both have more of a lateral sense of progression in how they've been tailored to perform their intended roles. So it's not going to be so much a matter of one ship being inherently better than the other, but more that what ends up being better for you is going to be based almost entirely on what your needs are. Now that they're both in-game, I have a lot clearer idea about what these ships are as opposed to how they're described as being during the concept sale and from what was said about them in their Q&A posting. And I've found that they've changed a lot since then, so I'm going to be going over what all those changes are throughout the video as well as comparing things like their components, crew size, internal layouts, cargo and vehicle hauling capacities, performance, and weapon loadouts. And the reason why I'm not including the A2 in this comparison, which is the bomber slash gunboat version of the Herc, is mainly because the A2 exists in a category all on its own. It's not an example of lateral progression, but is more of a straight up upgrade in nearly every way. The only thing that it sacrifices is some of its cargo space and transport capacity for a lot more guns, bombs, and even more components. So there's too much of a difference between the A2 and the other variants. Whereas the C2 and the M2 have a lot more give and take when it comes to how they were designed. Before I start going over what the differences are between these vessels, I'd like to go over what they have in common. And there's a number of similarities that exist between these two ships. Like, for instance, both of their vehicle bays have the exact same dimensions. They can carry the same number of vehicles, and they each have a ramp that extends out from the front of the bay, and another that's in the rear of the ship. So no matter which version you pick, you're still going to have the same roll-on, roll-off capabilities when it comes to loading and unloading vehicles. And it was this mini Idris-like quality that they have which was the very thing about the M2 and the C2 that initially caught my attention to begin with. All of the Hercules variants have a pair of VTOL thrusters which lock into place when you engage the ship's landing mode. And these thrusters are no joke. You can take off like a rocket from a horizontal position and land straight down just as fast. They're so powerful that when you're first getting used to them, you're gonna have to be careful not to ram into the top of your hangar or accidentally pancake the ship down onto a landing pad. The interior of both ships have the same basic layout. They have a single lift on the port side that you can use to enter the ship from, which also connects to both of its other two decks. A nice little unique feature of the Starlifter series is that they've hermetically sealed the elevator to prevent it from decompressing the rest of the vessel. There's also a ladder that connects the upper and lower decks together so you can manually move between them. It's sealed off by an airtight hatch that automatically opens when you climb up or down it. The bottom deck is entirely dedicated to storing cargo and vehicles. It can even be used to transport some of the smaller ships like the Kruger, the Pisces, the Razor, the Aurora, the 85X, anything from the 100 series, the MPUV, and the M50. And they haven't made a single vehicle yet that it can't carry. The top deck is divided into four sections. The first area is referred to as the main deck and it acts as a central hub that connects all the other rooms together. A series of exposed conduits runs down the center of it and two gangways stretch across it which quite literally bridges the port and starboard halves of the ship together. Instead, all along its periphery are a series of containers that are used for either holding extra storage or housing additional components. And at the rear of the deck are another set of housings that are used for storing even more of its larger components, and this is where you can internally access both of its main engines from. The forwardmost section of the upper floor leads to the long neck of the Hercules, which functionally connects the main body of the ship to the flight deck and two additional rooms are set along the outermost parts of the port and starboard sides of the ship, and are set aside for various functions like providing quarters for the crew, stowing additional weapons and gear, providing entertainment for long travels, and safely seating any additional drop soldiers that they're transporting. All the Hercules variants have a blind spot on the top of the ship that isn't covered by any of its guns, and from this vantage point attackers are going to have the widest part of the ship's cross section to shoot at, and from this position the ship's guns aren't going to be able to fire back at them. Unfortunately, the Herc isn't fast enough to outturn a smaller ship, so once an enemy manages to nestle itself into this spot and starts firing at you, then your only option is to try and run away before it can knock your shields out. And this flaw was done on purpose to make the Hercules more reliant on using escort ships to protect it. So if you decide to go at it alone, then you're going to be nothing more than a giant loot pinata for pirates and random marauders. 
those are all things that they have in common. But they also have a series of differences that distinctly marks one Starlifter variant from the other, like for instance how well armored they are. The C2 has medium armor while the M2 is covered in heavy armor. This isn't so much of a big deal right now, but after physicalized damage comes online, this is going to become a major thing when it comes to ships. These vessels were never meant to be governed by a hit point system. Instead, you're supposed to be trying to disable a ship by targeting one of its components, and then using your ship's guns to physically drill a hole through its hull to the point where you can either hit it or sever its connection to the rest of the ship. An armor, especially heavy armor, is going to greatly impede your ability to do this. The downside to having heavier armor is that it's going to affect the way a ship moves. It adds weight to it, and as a result, it's going to perform more sluggishly. A more heavily armored ship is going to have a slower rate of acceleration, and it's going to be less responsive when it's turning, pitching, and rolling. There's been some changes done to the sizes and number of components that each of these two variants have. Originally, the C2 was supposed to have two medium-sized coolers, while the M2 is listed as having a single large one. They now both have two large coolers and an identical number of component slots for everything else. So now there's no difference between the number of components or with the sizes of the components that they can each hold, but they do come with a different default loadout. The C2 is mainly outfitted with industrial components, while the M2s are all military grade. It's common for people to not care about what a ship comes stock with, because no matter what it ends up having, they're still going to eventually upgrade it to something that's better. But ideally, it does still matter, because people are going to have to put up with their lower performing default components while they're earning enough UEC to start outfitting their ship with the items that they actually want. And the components for a ship that's the size of a Herc aren't going to come cheap. And also, every time you claim insurance on your ship, that's assuming you have the default level of insurance, then you're going to end up having to go right back to having all stock components again. The biggest and most noticeable difference in their default components, at least for me, is with the quantum drive that the M2 comes with. It spools up and travels a lot faster than the C2's does. The C2's quantum drive is more efficient, but efficiency isn't really much of a factor right now. Currently, the C2 is listed in-game as having a storage capacity of 696 SCUs, and that doesn't include the internal storage compartments or any of its lockers. It only applies to the ship's main cargo grid. While the M2 is listed as having 522 SCUs of storage space. Originally, the C2 was intended to have 624 SCUs, while the M2 only had 468, so they've both been given an upgrade since the original concept sale. The weapon systems for each ship are also a little different from one another. The C2 has two remote turrets that holds two size 4 guns that are operated by the co-pilot. While the pilot has control over a pair of gimbaled size 4s that can be swapped out for two fixed size 5 guns. When it comes to weapons, the M2 has everything that the C2 has plus an additional turret that's located on the chin of the ship, and it's controlled by a dedicated gunner station that's on the bridge. This turret is also armed with a pair of size 4 guns and it's positioned over the front of the ramp so that it can be used to fire down on any ground targets that are in front of and below the ship. This makes it ideal for providing cover fire for while you're attempting to unload vehicles out through the front ramp. The C2 is rated as having a maximum size crew of two people, which consists of a pilot and a co-pilot, while the M2 is rated as having a maximum crew size of three. This includes the pilot, co-pilot, and a dedicated gunner. We seem to be quickly getting to a point where minimum and maximum recommended crew sizes for large and cap ships are becoming an outdated concept. The minimum crew size for every ship is always going to be one. And the need for things like a dedicated scanner station, missile operators, medics, onboard security staff, and engineers are going to make the necessary number of crew to be far bigger than it is now. Which, I feel that at some point this growing need for more personnel is going to spark a major rethink as to how many people it's going to actually take to properly run a ship. Which in turn is going to force them to reevaluate what the ratio is between what the number of crewmen ends up being to the number of bunks that each vessel currently has. And lastly, another major difference when it comes to these two ships isn't necessarily with how the inner structure of it's laid out, but more about what it uses each of its rooms for, which can differ greatly between the M2 and the C2. Like for instance, the bridge and the long neck that connects it to the main body has a different composition in each ship. The C2's bridge has two seats, one for the pilot and another for the co-pilot. While the M2 has the same layout, but it also has an additional gunner station that's located on the port side of the flight deck. The room that's adjacent to the bridge on the M2 has 8 escape pods in it, while well, the same room in the C2 has 2 weapons lockers, 2 escape pods, and 2 racks for storing armor. The next room which connects to the main deck has the same look and structure for both the C2 and the M2. Set along its walls are housings that can hold 4 large components which are situated 2 to a side and directly across from one another. Located along the port and starboard sides of the ship are individual rooms which are set up to cater to the crew's specialized needs. 
On the port side of the M2 is the auxiliary crew quarters. It has jump seats for 12 additional crewmen and an extra bathroom, wall storage, and provides easy access to the ship's subsystems. At the end of the room is an armory that has an entire wall that's dedicated to storing weapons, and across from it are eight compartments that could be used to hold suits of armor. It also has a number of additional storage compartments in here that have been mounted into the ceiling. The C2 has converted its auxiliary crew quarters into a rec room. It has an entertainment center built into it that has more of a living room feel, which comes complete with a TV and a couch setup and shelving space along the walls for holding various kinds of knickknacks. It also has a kitchen area that's big enough to hold several appliances which sits opposite of a dispensary. It has a fridge for storing small perishables and a small pantry. And at the end of the room is a table that could comfortably sit four at a time. The C2 and the M2 have their habitation room located in the same spot on the starboard side of the ship. And they're very similar in the sense that they both have two bathroom shower combos, two desks, and four wall lockers. The main difference between them is that the C2 has two beds, one for each of its standard crewmen, and each one of them are set up in individual niches that are recessed into the wall of the ship. While the M2 has a total of three beds, they have the same setup and look as the ones that you'd find in the C2, with the exception that one of the niches has a single bed in it, while the other one has two stacked one on top of another like a traditional bunk bed. So, why would you want an M2 over a C2? The M2 is the military variant that's more of a dedicated dropship. It's better protected and it's more heavily armored than the C2 is. The downside to it is that the M2's heavy armor makes it slower than the C2 in both its acceleration and maneuverability and it also carries less cargo. But the M2 is a godsend for big orgs and players who plan on being involved in full-scale military operations. Previously, orgs had to rely on ships like the Starfarer to transport large numbers of vehicles around, and that isn't exactly the most atmospheric capable of ships to have to use. Now, out of these two variants, this ship seems to be more utilitarian in nature. It's the kind of vessel that was made for someone who'd take an armory over a crewman's lounge, and wants more guns, bunk space, jump seats, and escape pods rather than having extra cargo storage. It's going to be for people who tend to gravitate more towards dedicated ships, and would be more inclined to get the M2 because they want their dropship to be more geared towards military operations, and are going to need something that has more offensive and defensive capabilities. I really like the fact that it's more heavily armored, and I found that the slower speed of the M2 doesn't affect how I fly it. I still take the same amount of care when coming in for a landing and tend to approach an LZ in the same way when I'm flying an M2 as I do when I'm flying a C2. You can't pancake this ship down in the middle of a battlefield like it was a Valkyrie. The Val is the kind of dropship that was meant to fly right into the middle of a battle, quickly land and deliver a wave of infantry directly to the front lines, and then be able to get out of there in one piece so that you can repeat the process all over again. While something like the M2 is going to take longer to deploy all of its vehicles and the personnel that it's carrying, and the ship's wide berth is going to restrict its ability to land. So, before you can touch down, you're going to have to find an area that's not only big enough to land at, but that's also going to be out of the enemy's line of fire. Because if you don't, ground-to-air deterrents like the ballista that pose a real threat to it could turn it into scrap before it even finishes unloading. The only thing that I don't like about the M2 is how the responsibilities for the gunners are set up. Making the co-pilot operate both the ventral and rear turret simultaneously or having to choose between the two is almost infuriatingly bad design. Ideally, if I could set this up, I'd slave the chin turret to the pilot's seat so they'd be able to operate it and the weapons that they previously had control over. And then I'd let the co-pilot and the dedicated gunner be able to choose between using the dorsal or the rear turret. That way you could operate all of its guns simultaneously while using only three people to do it. And I know that in the future you're going to be able to set individual stations to be whatever you want them to be, but for now, this would be a great alternative to have while we're waiting for those options to be implemented. Another thing about this ship that I'd like to see change is how the habitation room is laid out. I'd remove the two desks, which ideally seems more like detailing rather than something that has any real practical use, especially for a military ship, and replace them each with a set of bunk beds. A ship of this size could easily end up needing a crew of six to seven people once you start factoring in security staff, engineers, medics, and dedicated station operators. Now, I was going to originally suggest that they replace one of these desks with a small kitchen, but the design staff had already stated that they had gone a little overboard when it comes to removing the galley from the C2, and at some point they're going to be putting it back in. But the kitchen that they'll be installing is going to be greatly scaled down from the one that you're going to find in the C2. Most likely it would resemble what the Valkyrie has, which is something that's functional and yet doesn't take up a lot of room. Another thing that bugs me about the M2 is how the storage space is exactly the same for both ships, yet the M2 carries less cargo than the C2 does. 
I realize that this is just part of a gameplay mechanic, but ideally before these ships were flyable, I assumed that the C2 would have an additional cargo grid somewhere on the top deck that the M2 would replace with a dedicated gunner station, and that didn't end up being the case. Instead, there's just some hand wavium reason why it can't hold as much cargo, and little things like that which make no sense have a tendency to annoy me. But none of these things are game changers as far as I'm concerned. They're details that I'd like to see changed if they could, but none of them are going to stop me from wanting this ship. So if you want a militaristic, dedicated dropship that's better both offensively and defensively, then this is going to be the way to go. So why would you want a C2 rather than an M2? This variant was intended to be more of a civilian cargo hauler, and if that's the role that you want to play, then this ship is going to be better suited to your particular kind of playstyle. It's going to be for pilots who plan on running with a convoy, who are going to be making it a point to travel through more heavily frequented shipping lanes and traveling in safer systems like Terra. Pilots who do these things aren't going to need the more expensive firepower or protection that the M2 has. Instead, they're going to want to have what the C2 offers, like more reliable components rather than higher performing ones, better crew accommodations, higher responsiveness, and a larger capacity for carrying cargo. It's also going to be the best hauler that you could get before you start looking into more dedicated ships like a Merchantman or a Hull C. And when it comes to the day-to-day -day grind, this ship is going to be better at making money than the M2. Traditionally, the career path that always yields the most cash in a space sim has always been cargo hauling. And the M2 isn't as much about making money, but is more about being useful in its capacity to deliver large numbers of vehicles into dangerous situations. For the most part, that's not going to earn you a lot, or potentially any UEC, but it's going to make you a lot more of an asset to your org, especially if they plan on engaging in any large-scale battles. And as far as being a vehicle transport goes, the C2 has the exact same capacity for transporting ground vehicles as the M2. So instead of being more suited for dropping vehicles into a combat zone, it's going to be a better choice for civilian-orientated transport jobs. Like, for instance, hauling a group of racing ships to a track and being able to get there before the drivers have to sign in and submit their vehicles for inspection. Or it could be used to transport supplies to an outpost colony or a refugee camp. These are all jobs that wouldn't require it to have the extra armor, weapons, or the same personnel transport capabilities that the M2 has. So instead of having those things, the C2 can be a faster ship. It's able to carry a significantly larger amount of cargo. It's more maneuverable, and it has a lot of onboard amenities that are going to make the journey a bit more of an enjoyable experience for the crew. And speaking of the crew, the C2 requires a smaller number of people to fully run it. But in all honesty, because of the huge blind spot that it has, I'd rather be traveling with an escort fighter rather than having an extra turret operator. And the money that you make from the extra cargo space that the C2 carries could be used to pay for an escort ship. So that feature could almost pay for itself. But if you're going to run within certain safe zones and more well-traveled shipping lanes, then you might as well try and run with a convoy and see if you can fly it solo so that you could min-max your potential earnings as much as possible. And the M2 would never be able to get away with running it solo. It's always going to need to have a full crew and then some to operate all of its turrets, and it's most likely going to require having a couple of extra engineers at the ready to fix any damage that you're going to take while flying over an active war zone. And it would most likely require the services of several escorts. The bottom line is that the M2 is better suited for combat-based scenarios and is more of a dedicated vehicle transport than it is anything else. So if combat's your thing, then this is going to be the ship for you. While the C2 is more civilian oriented it's a better cargo hauler, and all the combat options that it loses actually makes it a better craft for non-combat oriented missions, and to be used for making money with. If you still can't decide between these two ships, then ask yourself this simple question. Am I going to be doing more combat oriented stuff? Or am I going to be mainly using this ship to grind for UEC? And that should really answer it for you. If you're someone who's been having trouble deciding between these two ships, then I hope that this video helps you figure out which one is going to be the better choice for you. Because regardless if you're making a purchase either through the ship store or buying it in-game, you're still going to want to make the best decision that you can. And the more informed you are, the better of a choice you're going to be able to make. And these videos are intended to help you do just that. Well, that's going to be it for this episode of Versus. I'd like to thank everybody for liking and subscribing because it really helps the channel to grow, and I'd also like to give a special thanks to my patrons for supporting me, because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to afford to put the time and effort that I do into making these videos. Thanks again, and take care.